What's up guys, welcome to another episode of 5 Mechanical Keyboard Intros Checks. In this episode we'll be talking about two key sets with a profile I've never really talked about before and three keyboards from 60% to full size. Anyway, if this is the content that you guys like, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe. Alright guys, see you after the break. The first IC in our list is DSS Carpentaria. This is an IC proposed by Acetrin in early February. It is inspired by a sunset over Carpentaria, California and runs all custom RAL colors. There are three kits proposed, the base kit, an accent kit, and an ortho and 40s coverage kit. Even though it's super early in the IC phase, there are quite a few vendors tagged already. However, there's still no date or price mentioned yet. What drew me to this during my weekly browsing was that it's DSS. I personally feel that Signature Plastics colors are a lot more vibrant than GMKs, but their profiles are not that exciting. DSS, however, seems to be their most comfortable high profile for me. The other reason it caught my eye is that it seems to be a darker version of one of my favorite sets. Nautilus. Just take a look at that. You'll see that it's very, very similar. In fact, I'd say that DSS Carpentaria looks a bit better. If this set proceeds to group by, I'll probably be buying this. The Mech Merlin verdict is strong consider. So perhaps I was influenced by DSS Carpentaria, but I started looking for other DSS sets. Lo and behold, DSS Late Harvest was IC'd by, no pun intended, about a week earlier than DSS Carpentaria. This set uses stock SP colors and three custom RAL colors, and it's intended to be sold as a one large single base kit. There are some vendors here listed, but still no pricing or group by date yet. I'm going to say that this might be one of the more beautiful SP sets I've ever seen. Due to the number of colors used and with three being custom, I'm fully expecting this kit to be quite expensive, probably closer to 200 actually. So if this set actually goes into GB the same time that DSS Carpentaria does, I am going to be so strapped for cash trying to afford both. However, I will say that if I could only pick one, I would choose DSS Late Harvest. The Mech Merlin verdict is strong buy. Next up is a full size board posted by KBD fans in mid January. Some quick details here are that this will be a fixed layout, which I think would imply that it's hot swap, it's fully gasket mount, has a 9 degree typing angle, knob support which I assume is a rotary encoder, and detachable USB-C which I'm assuming means daughter board. No group by date set quite yet, but the projected price is over 350 This might be one of KBD fans most expensive boards. But let's look at that photo a bit closer. That layout is not your typical full sized. In fact, it's missing the nav cluster, bringing the total key count from the typical 104 to 99. This is not a bad thing, as it decreases the overall width of the board by two columns. This makes it appealing to enthusiasts and those new to the community, perhaps transitioning from a full-sized board. That rotary knob is a nice touch, but I'm concerned that it's a little too shallow and hard to turn. The renders make it look like it's shorter than a typical Cherry Profile keycap, and its edges are also extremely close to the numpad and modifiers. If you have larger fingers, it might be hard to turn. Overall, the board looks great, and if KBD fans can keep it at the 350 price range, this could be quite the hit. If you've been waiting to join this hobby for a while, but can't get around the fact that almost every keyboard group buy is 60 or 65%, this might be the board that you want. The MacMillan verdict is strong consider. So this next one, I'm not really sure if I should talk about it because I really want this board and I'm going to have to compete with all of you, but since it did grab my attention, it's fair game. Of course, what I'm talking about here is the Iron 165R2 from VoxKey, posted in early February, and this is actually set for a group buy on February 27th. That's in two weeks. This is a gasket mounted seamless 65 that will be available on Canon Keys, Desk Hero, My Keyboard, and Island KB. At this point, no pricing or stock listed quite yet, but I fully expect it to be another mad rush to get in. Maybe it'll be raffled this time, who knows. 
It will also be released in three colors, Midnight Teal, Graphite, and Red. So what's different between this and R1? Apparently it's got deeper gasket pockets for less compression, a small top case height increase so that you hide the keycaps better, removal of the cable channel, which I kind of wish that they would keep, but oh well. There's a revised PCB and apparently the C3 variant of the unified USB-C daughter board. That means it's got ESD protection, amongst other things. So even if I don't get in, I'm hoping to get a daughter board and that revised PCB. Hopefully that's doable. Honestly, visually speaking, I'm not seeing much of a difference here. This looks pretty much identical to my R1. I'd be really curious to hear if there's any difference in typing sounds though. That would probably be what tips me over 100%. Regardless, I'm in for that daughter board and PCB. The MacMarone verdict is strong buy. Actually, no, I did not say that. Gloss over this section completely. Ignore what I just said. This is a weak buy. Do not buy it. Next up is the 60% board posted by Endigy in late January. This is the Axe 60 inspired by the Leviathan Axe in God of War 4. It's got gasket mount, an 8 degree typing angle, daughter board, and he's claiming future support for Bluetooth. Still super early in the IC phase, so no vendors, group by date, or projected price quite yet. As you can see, this is a very intricate board. The color matching looks great, and overall, I think this is a beautiful work of art. It's quite an eye catcher and deviates pretty far from the 60% design we're used to seeing. It caught my eye mainly because it's so unlike any 60 I've seen. However, I do feel it's a little bit too much. A lot of ICs and GBs are run because a designer wants something for themselves. In many instances, this design happens to be loved by others as well. It seems that the people that would actually completely fall in love with the X60 have to be part of a very small demographic. Maybe you need to share similar interests like the OP, God of War 4, Leviathan X. The MacMarone verdict is consider. All right guys, thanks again for joining in. And as usual, click on the links down below to join in on the conversation. Also let me know which one of these really interested you the most. Anyway guys, thanks for joining in again and I'll see you next time. Goodbye now.